tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah and he is the lamb of God. He can decide to be who he wants at any time. He is the king of glory. We have come to him this morning with all reverence and honor to him. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. He is an awesome God. And this morning, I want to take the opportunity to say thank you to the Most High God. We have gallant men of God in this place, but it has been the goodness of God that has brought me here. And so in all humility, I salute our, our, our pastor, our retired daddy, Babae, and, and our presiding elder and all our elders. Thank you so much for the opportunity to stand before you to share the mind of God with us. Hallelujah. God bless us all. Let's pray. Father, this morning, O oh God, in all humility, O oh God, I stand at your feet and ask, O oh God, that all trans, O oh God, be made available in the name of Jesus. Without you, Spirit of God, we are nothing. You keep surprising us with all the goodies that you have, O oh God. And so this morning, our prayer is that you prepare our hearts, oh God. Speak as you want to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, I am just overjoyed by that which the Spirit of God is doing in the midst of us. And I want to share a, a short message with you, and then we'll launch into prayer. It's, it, it's, it's beginning to look like, it, it, not that it's beginning to look like, but it looks like it's my... Is a signature of me. The Spirit of God does not just let me go. And so this morning, we want to discuss stirring up the supernatural through the anointing. Hallelujah. Stirring up the supernatural in us. If there is a water body that stays calm, you would see everything and anything that is at the bottom of the water, right? But when that water is stirred up, things happen that you cannot see. And in the spiritual world, if we want to see things with our physical eyes, we'll not be able to see anything. And so we need to stir up the supernatural in us so that we'll be able to get on the other side. Hallelujah. For us to be able to get to the other side, we need to stir up the supernatural of God in us. And, and I, I was looking at, at when I was praying about this, and thinking about the word supernatural, from the English perspective, it's a compound word. Two words that have been put together, super and natural. And when we say super, what it simply means is that something that is very good, from the dictionary meaning, something very pleasant, and something that is, is excellent, that is what we call super. And when it is used in the combination with, with another word, it means that being above, Go 
going over, beyond. That is what, when, when we are looking at super. And then when we talk about natural as a word, it means something that is existing in, something that is, is existing and is caused by nature. Hallelujah. So it, it, it also means that it is not made or caused by mankind. So anything that is not just the hand of any man that has done. And so when we put the two words together as a compound word, supernatural, it means existing beyond, this is, this is what I came up with, existing beyond what is caused by nature. Hallelujah. As Christians, the only time we come, we can exist beyond the natural is when the Holy Spirit is at work mightily in and through us. When the Spirit of God is working wonders in and through us, then we can say that we are existing in the supernatural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Scripture makes us understand. And we know, we know the story of Jesus. Hallelujah. It, 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 our own Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he was just a carpenter's son. How many of us know that? Remember that. Even our Sunday school kids can tell us. Um, um, Jesus' father was Joseph, right? He was a carpenter. And, and the son of a carpenter, most of the times, I'll say here in America, yes, somebody who does handiwork makes a lot of money. But those days in the past, a carpenter's son never respected. Nobody saw him as anything good coming out of him, right? But when he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, when Jesus, after going through all the stuff for 30 years, when he returned with a different identity, what happened? Things changed. In the power of the Holy Ghost, when he returned, he was full of divine nature. Hallelujah. He was full of the divinity. When the Holy Spirit came, came and, and dwelt supernaturally in and through him, he was loaded. Hallelujah. He carried so much power that all had no option but to hear him. We want to read scripture. If you have your Bibles with you, let's read Luke chapter 16, the verse 22. I want to back what I'm saying with scripture. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open that up with me. We are still trying to see how we stir up the supernatural in us. Luke chapter... Four, verse 16 to 22. 4, verse 16 to 22. And the Bible says that, So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet of Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the verse 18, and it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recover recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Hallelujah. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Verse 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, the verse 20, and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Verse 22, so all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? Can you imagine? When the Holy Spirit has finished working on you and you come out and you speak, all they are able to ask is, is this not Joseph's son? But the difference is that the Holy Spirit has made a difference in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and we also want to read John chapter 20, verse 19 to 22. 
John chapter 20, the verse 19 to 22. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit making a difference. And, and write this down. When you have time as you go through the week, read Acts chapter 2, the verse 1 to 41. When you have time, take your time and go over it. It's a long um, 1 to 41. I don't want us to take so much time and go into it. But let's read John chapter 20, verse 19 to 22. It says, then the same, the same day at evening. I'm reading from the New King James Version anyway, if you care to know. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hand and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. The verse 21. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. The verse 22 says, And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that is able to transform. The Holy Spirit that is able to change the status quo. The Holy Spirit who is able to transform the things that happen around us by virtue of his presence in us. Hallelujah. I pray that God, through his supernatural working, will stir up the deposit of the power that is in us all. So that we'll become a sign and a wonder in our day and our time today. Hallelujah. Who wants to be a sign and a wonder? It's not just showing off what God can do through you. No. But that as you walk through a place, like, like a pastor was saying last week, somebody was going to walk and begin to see people walk with their heads upside down. It is not to show off, but to show you that there is something in the supernatural. Hallelujah. If you yearn and desire to be able to have that, God will give to you because he is a good God. Everything that is in God is good. He will give to you when you desire. If you do not desire the power of the Holy Spirit, guess what? The Holy Spirit is not like the Oconfor. If you did not understand my Greek that I spoke, the Holy Spirit is not like the fetish priest who will force, the devil will force you to take that which he has. But the Holy Spirit is a gentle man. The Holy Spirit is one that says that you want me to come and indwell you. Here I am. Let us work together. He will operate on your level. Hallelujah. If you allow the Spirit of God to stir up that, is, that which is in your supernatural it will work and all men will see and know that God is indeed a good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As born again believers, I want us all to make this note. If you're writing something, I want you to write this. The substance of the anointing of God on the inside of us gives us the grace to stir up the supernatural in our lives. I repeat that again. The substance of the anointing of God on the inside of us gives us the grace to stir up the supernatural in our lives. When Jesus was going to the cross, he made us a promise. And when he returned, that promise that he made to us, he gave to us. I don't want to go ahead of myself on the notes. But when Jesus left and he gave us that promise, he sent us the promise. We receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. And so as I sit here today, as, you, as I stand here today, as you sit here today, the promise of the Holy Spirit is in you. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God indwells you, lives on the inside of you. And so the substance of the anointing of God gives you the, the grace to stir up that supernatural on the inside of you. If you do not stay, that what happens is that he will remain dormant. He will not push you. And he will stay just quietly and watch you. When you think that you need him, he will come in right on time and do that which you expect of him. And, and I want to encourage us that and let us know all this we are talking about is not for 
for, for show off, like I keep saying. I don't know why the term show off keeps coming back to me this morning. But the Spirit of God is not for us to show off. The Spirit of God is for us to fulfill God's own goodness in us. That the glory of God will be seen through us. Hallelujah. So we, uh, w- what I want us to understand again this morning is that we are born of the seed of God. We are born of the seed of God. It's a very, a very detailed statement. It is, it is a mystery to think about the fact that I am born of the seed of God. Imagine that when a, plant, a seed is put in the soil, what happens to the seed? The seed will germinate. It will grow. And the same seed that was put in the ground germinates and becomes the same thing that you put in the soil. Hallelujah. And so for us to be born of the seed of God, it is a mystery. Hallelujah. And what has happened to us is that we have been blended together. The seed of God and our humanity has been blended together. And some people will say our, our form and our nature as children of God is an amalgamation of the divine nature of God. In our physical man. Our physical and sinful man was taken to the cross of Calvary. And the seed of God was blended in with that. And so we have become a new man. Becoming such a new man makes us extraordinary and special. Hallelujah. If, if at any point in your life as a child of God, you feel that you are not worth anything, I am here this morning to remind you that you are an amalgamation of, of, of God's divine nature, hallelujah, and, and your human nature. And so you are not just an ordinary person, hallelujah. You are a supernatural being, amen. I want us to read, um, let, let's, let's, let's just... 1 Peter 1.23 from the New King James Version says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. That is what we are made of as children of God. What I just said was 1 Peter 1.23. And because we carry the very nature of God, There are so many things that we can do with what God has deposited in us. God has deposited so much in us that we are able to do so many things. We need to stir up those things that God has deposited in us. My biggest question to us all, even to myself, whilst I was reflecting on the word of God, was that do we know how to use what God has deposited in us. Ask yourself this question and and, and think about it as you go through the week. Do I know how to use that which God has deposited in me for his glory to be seen? As human beings, our selfish nature occasionally will come in. But then we ask ourselves, is it for Christ or it is for man? Hallelujah. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We are stirring up the supernatural. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, is, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Our humanity has given way to the old man and we have taken the very nature of our father in heaven. Hallelujah. We have taken the very DNA of God. James chapter 1 verse 18. He says that of his own will, he has, he brought us, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits 
of his creation. Hallelujah. And so if you are the first fruit of God's creation, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just trying to let you know, have that awareness that you are a special being. You are a supernatural creature of God. You are a special being in the eyes of God. If God calls forth those things that are not and they come into being, if you are a first fruit of Christ, when you speak, things should happen. Hallelujah. We need to unwind our minds and rewind our minds. We have to unlearn certain things that we have learned as children of God or as, as uh, believers that were growing in the Lord. And then learn certain things that are a reality. At times we walk in things that we think, oh, um, but I am a human being. No, you are a supernatural being. Yes, you are a human being. That's all right. You have blood flowing through you just like everybody. But see yourself as a supernatural being. The only way you can operate in the supernatural is to acknowledge that I am a supernatural being. Hallelujah. And when you are operating, it's not because you want to show off. But you know that who lives in you. And so you, you, you operate at that wavelength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not easy to, to know exactly where you are coming from. I'll be very honest with you. As children of God and as supernatural beings, it is not an easy task. To know where we are coming from. Somebody would say, oh yeah, but I know I am a child of God. Believe you me, if you see something very scary happening right now, you even forget that there is a God. Let's be real and let's, let's stop faking it as children of God. We do that a lot. The people of the world, they accept that they don't have anything. And if they have something, it means that they have gone to do something in the extraordinary, Right? But for us, we know we have a father. But occasionally we forget about the supernatural that we can operate in. I, I, just, I just laughed. I want to make a statement, but I think I'll hold on to that statement I want to make. It would sound to, when I was, I was, I was studying the scriptures and reading, um, even talking about the supernatural. Some people believe that the supernatural um, um, literally is leading you to witchcraft. That is what some people think. But if I have a God that opens my eye to see the things that no one can see, somebody will literally equate me to a witch. And bless God for that. Me, I don't have any other thing that I go look up to. I just sit down and madoshi kabrando labrande kedeba. He opens my eyes and I see it. You think I have gone to a fetish place. Oh, you have no problem. You have to deal with that because I know honestly on the very depth of my heart that I know no other man but the king of glory. Hallelujah. And he is the one who decides to open my eyes to see those things that you do not see. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to share a story um, to give you a little understanding of the supernatural I'm talking about. This is something that really happened to me. Most of the times the spirit of God... Um, speaks to me through dreams. And so, one morning I woke up very troubled. I had a dream that my, my father's own, um, his, his brother's children were attacking him on, an, on a land issue back home. And so when I woke up, it was a Sunday morning. I went, I, I didn't even mention it to my husband. So immediately we went, we went to church and there was a program happening, and this leader of our church, like I've been saying every time, if God has a message for you and he doesn't share with me, when you say it, I'll take it with a pinch of salt. And so when we went into the service, this man just from nowhere put me aside and said, Liu, there's something going on in your house today. Immediately he said it, I started laughing. I thought it was a joke. And then just some few minutes after the service ended, my father picked up a phone and called me. He was in Ghana at the time. And I asked him if everything was okay. And he said, no, no, no. Nothing. And, and I said, okay, stop right there. I think that God has told me a little bit of what is happening. Let me tell you. 
I, I, I broke down not because of what I was hearing, because it was like a third, a confirmation of what God had already spoken. And I asked myself, God, what is it that I have done for you to decide to tell me exactly what was going on ahead of time? The point I'm making is that let us make it a focus. There is nothing that God cannot do. When we ask God anything he will give to us, if it is all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you want, I challenge you this morning, go back to our Father in heaven and say, Father, give each one of those gifts to me. And believe you me, the diligence with which we go back to God and ask for things, we receive. And the heart with which you ask God for, if it is a genuine heart, God knows. God knows the intent of every heart. He knows the intent of every mind. If what you are doing is for so of, believe you me, God cannot be mocked. Our God in heaven can never be mocked. There is nothing that is new under the surface of this earth. He knows it all. He can tell it all. If you go back to him genuinely, he will give it to you. Let your heart desire for the supernatural and you will receive of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come to the realm of God. And I want us to have this understanding that we as born again believers can do all things that Jesus did and we can even do greater than he did. Hallelujah. John chapter 14 verse 12 to 14. Let's read that. John 14. And, and I, forgive me if it looks like I am speaking too many scriptures because I believe that anything that I speak that is not in the Bible is my word. And I am not here to share my word. I am here to share the word of God and so I like to back it with scripture. John chapter 14, the verse 12 to 14. It says that most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do will do also. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my father, the verse 13, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the father may be glorified in the son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. Are you limiting yourself? Are you limiting God? He says, anything that you ask in my name. I tell myself that anytime I want to go back to God, I want to go to God with a need on my heart. I will ask myself, and I will ask, I'll ask myself before I go, is this something that will glorify the Father in heaven? Or is this something that is a selfish desire? If I think that it is a selfish desire, I won't go because I know the answer to it. If you are going to God to ask for something, think through your thoughts. Because he says, I will do all things. But remember, there's a caveat to that. It has to lie within the will of God for you. A good father will not give you anything that will go and kill you because you are his child and you ask him, you think that, oh, he's my father. And so I can go to my father in all boldness. And so I'm going to my papa this morning to ask him for something. If he thinks that he will give that blessing to you and that blessing will kill you, guess what? He will hold that off. The devil will give it to you and kill you after that. You want money, quick money? Go to the devil, go to the, the, the witch doctors. They will do all that they want for you. But believe you me, the end result is death. But the spirit of God who knows all things and he's a good spirit and he's a good God will give you the things that will give you an expected end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we can ask our father in all things, walking in the supernatural is supposed to be our daily living. In our dispensation today, as, as believers, the Spirit of God is within us. 
and the Spirit of God is upon us. How many of you agree with me on that statement? The Spirit of God is within us and is upon us. We got a double portion of that. The people of God, the, the people of old, like Elijah, he had the Spirit of God come upon him. He declared that there should be no rain. There was no rain. When he was ready to release the rain, what did he do? He released the rain. Hallelujah. Because the Spirit of God was upon him. But for us today in our dispensation, the Spirit of God lives on the inside of us. When Jesus went to the cross, we received all of him in us. Hallelujah. I want you to don't, don't belittle yourself. I want you to see yourself as somebody who has that which the old folks didn't get. Hallelujah. We got a double portion. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. Let's read it all together. Let's all read it. Uh, please um, put it up there so we can all read it together. Joel chapter 2, the verse 28. Joel chapter 2. Verse 28. Okay, let's all go. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Hallelujah. He says that he would do what? He would pour out. Are we not special? We are supernatural beings. Let's begin to walk in that supernatural. Look, you see somebody who is no well, let the faith in you be stirred up. Let the supernatural in you be stirred up. Stretch forth your hands and declare in the name of Jesus, you receive the healing power of God. And believe you me, if you have never done it before, God will give you a surprise. God will surprise you. And I call it God will surprise you. He will shock you and he will surprise you at the things that he's able to do. We cut ourselves so short. We cut ourselves so short. A little girl there in the corner can speak to somebody who is sick. And because of her innocence, there will be total deliverance. Our problem is that as we are growing and we are learning, we think we are wiser and smarter than God. We think. And so we have to put an understanding to everything that we are doing. We have to think about things that we are doing. When the scripture says, put um, 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 a spit on the sun, put on, on your eye and you will see. We will go and ask, ask God, um, that spit, what kind of um, um, medicine is in it? Because we think we are wise. Let the spirit of God on the inside of you be stirred up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that God's plan for us is not for the anointing to last a lifetime. I believe that the anointing is supposed to outlive us. Hallelujah. Who believes that the anointing of God in our lives is not for us to just live and tomorrow if I am called to glory, the anointing of God that was in me is supposed to live on. How many of us know um, um, Catherine Coleman? People keep talking about this woman of God. Because the anointing of God on this woman's life was spectacular. How many of us know the story of Elisha? What did Elisha do? Elisha asked for a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Hallelujah. And guess what happened? <laughs> Let's read 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 20 to 21. Look, just the bones of Elisha could bring the dead back to life. 
what is it that you are desiring as a child? As for me, I think I, I'm getting to another level and it feels like I'm not having enough of God. Because if Elisha's bones were able to bring the dead back to life, then the supernatural of God, it wasn't about faith, believe you me. At that moment, when the dead man was in his tomb, in, in his, his coffin, and Elisha's body, Elisha's bones were in the tomb, there was nobody there exercising faith at that moment. Let's, re let's read it. 2 Kings chapter 13. Kings chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. This is scripture. It says, Then Elisha died, and they buried him. And the raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was as they were burying a man, then suddenly they spied a band of raiders. And they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. These people were on their way to go and bury the dead. And there are these troublemakers who come and they raid things up. So in order for them at that moment to even save their own lives, they decided to just drop the man's body. Hallelujah. And scripture says, And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Oh, what a supernatural. Oh, who wants to desire for that? What an amazing time. It was not an exercise of faith. No, none of the men around there at that time would say, oh, was exercising faith. And so we are dropping this man on the bones of Elisha. Elisha has been dead. His faith that he carried, his body had taken that away. What was left was of the supernatural. Hallelujah. That his bones could even fire life. Ah. Who desires to be like that? You need to have that desire. I have told myself that God, at a, at, at, from now on, I want to enter into a place that the glory of God will cause men not to be able to stand, but they want to give their all to you because of the supernatural in me. Hallelujah. It comes with a desire. It comes with a desire. Bible says that if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you, it was the spirit of God that was on the inside of Jesus that did not allow the tomb to hold him captive. He came out of the grave. They die. They call themselves prophets. They die, but what happens? The tomb swallows them. The termites will chew them up and they are left of nothing. But our Jesus, hallelujah. But the spirit of God that lived in our Jesus did not allow the tomb to hold him captive. Death could not hold him. The veil tore before him. He silenced the boast of sin and grave. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ our King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of what a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. You want to tell God that your bones will be fired up. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. 
supernatural in conclusion how can we stir up that supernatural in our hearts we have to acknowledge every good thing that God has deposited in our hearts beloved if you do not acknowledge that you are the daughter of a king then you will walk like a pauper if you do not acknowledge that the words that you speak carry life and power then you will see a situation and you will run away from the situation. I keep saying it and I will keep saying it. Let, all, let us all make it our focus. Look, when I see a problem now, I see the problem as a lion. When the lion roars, I will double roar. Because my father is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. My father is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Things will happen, yes. They will come and say that you have this going on. But what I know, I believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am healed. His report says I am whole. Even if I see the thing going the other way, what I say is that my father says it is well. And I walk in that wellness. I will acknowledge the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Not in the land of the dead. You have no life to acknowledge God's goodness. And so you want to acknowledge the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When you have power in you, when you have grace to speak, speak to the situation. Don't wait for pastor to come and speak that situation. Speak to that situation. Don't wait for presiding elder to come and speak to the situation. Speak to the situation because God has put words in your mouth that carry power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. Philemon is just one chapter. So you, that's Philemon 6. Hallelujah. Philemon chapter 6. It says that, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Look, we carry the whole of Christ in us. And so if I acknowledge the fact that if somebody is looking for me, they have to go and get God. Get to Jesus before they can reach out to me. Hey, then me, I can do things. Oh. Just the acknowledgement is enough. Walk in that acknowledgement. If there is a headache going on, my physical man will say, oh, I have headache. But then the spirit of God living on the inside of me says, I am healed, I am whole, I am well. And so I walk in that which God says. I walk in that acknowledgement. I will not be moved. Yes, the headache is there, but I will not focus. I will acknowledge God's goodness. And believe you me, that headache will find his own way to go. Hallelujah. I want to lift up your faith this morning. That there is so much power in you of the supernatural. Acknowledge it. Hallelujah. We study God's word and feed on who Christ is. Every Every day. Let's feed on what Christ is. Christ took away my shame and so I walk in liberty. Christ took away my disease so I walk whole. Christ took away my disgrace and so no man can disgrace me. If somebody is giving you pressure at work, take them to your God. Because he holds all men in his hand. Hallelujah. When we feed on him and we acknowledge what he's able to do, we receive that. Hallelujah. When Elisha asked for a double portion of Elijah's anointing, 
the key to him getting what he wanted was to see Elijah go. Does it make sense to you? He was supposed to see. He asked for a double portion. And Elijah said, when you see me, go. And so, Elisha was supposed to stay focused, acknowledging that Elijah was going to go. That is very tactical. And you have to be smart and spiritually alert. Because the moment you miss that and he's taken away, you lose that. But Elisha, as smart as he was, and I am not surprised that he bones his bones, can even bring the dead back to life. He desperately wanted it. Ah, of the living God, fall afresh. Oh. 